January 11, 2022, a hypersonic missile ripped through the Korean sky, violating United Nations Security Council resolutions and sparking talks of rapid nuclear advances North Korea has made despite the strict sanctions imposed on them for past offenses. This unpredictable behavior and violent threats against nations have the average global citizen wondering why the North Korean regime hasn't been taken care of yet. Why after decades of isolation, famine, poor services and constant fear have North Korean citizens not been liberated. Regimes have fallen for much less. I think it's time we look at ways to handle North Korea once and for all. I will go through every method that has some chance of success as well as those that are incredibly unwise. So for a task as important as this, Assassination seems to be a very attractive option. Spies in movies secretly slip into foreign countries to topple governments for their respective agencies. So can the same be done for Kim Jong-un? Well, it's not that easy. First of all, paranoia breeds protection, and according to the many high-ranking North Korean defectors that have blown the whistle on the secretive regime, Kim Jong-un is very paranoid. This is the guy who executed his own uncle because he thought he was part of a Chinese conspiracy to dethrone him. To realize just how hard an assassination by a foreign agent would be, you have to look at North Korea's terrain and landscape. The hermit nation is notoriously tough to sneak into, let alone escape. A foreign agent would have to traverse 120,000 square kilometers of mountainous land full of deep caverns already monitored by North Korean spies and military. If the spy even made it that far, they would somehow have to get close enough to the leader to take him out, which is a near impossibility given the large security he often travels with. Kim Jong-un keeps a tight circle of mostly family and constantly changes his location. Plus, any intervention from a foreign agent would only justify and validate the massive propaganda about the West and South Korea that's fed to North Koreans. Lastly, it's simply not enough to assassinate Kim Jong-un, you'll have to assassinate the entire Kim family which leaves the option of assassination as highly unlikely to work. Unless it's performed by either one of the elite party members, a frustrated rebel movement, or a family member. But finding a higher up who is willing to risk their lives and stop the constant river of gifts and privileges that come with being on Kim Jong-un's good side would be nearly impossible. Most elites who realize their lives are in danger defect instead of assassinate. Much like Tae Yong Ho, a North Korean envoy who defected while traveling for diplomatic duty. A disloyal family member is not much of a bet either. They are more likely to run than assassinate Kim Jong Un after the force he showed towards his half brother Kim Jong Nam and uncle Yang Song Taek. Those who aren't close are loyal to the core, or at least they know how to act the part. But let's imagine Kim Jong Un is taken out in a combination of good luck and planning. What happens after? It's not promising. Either a member of the Workers' Party, or more likely his wife or sister, would hold the seat of power until one of his children is ready to take the throne. As that kid grows up, you can expect the full force of the North Korean army to unleash its fury, as killing a head of state is not taken too kindly. So we'd be back to square one. So if you're thinking that assassinations have too many unknown variables and it would be better to wipe out all weapons, cripple any chance of fighting back and block any chance of a vengeance leader being groomed for takeover, then going nuclear is your best option. It's the safest option for the country dropping the bomb and it's deadly for North Korea and its weapons of mass destruction. The only problem is it's deadly for everybody else as well. There are currently 13,080 known nuclear warhead devices globally and 9 countries with nuclear capabilities. If you were to map them, China, Russia, the United States, United Kingdom, Pakistan, France, India, Israel and of course North Korea would have to be marked. Of these 9, the United States and Russia have the most. Russia leads the pack with 6,257, while the United States follows with 5,550. China has around 350, while North Korea has the lowest count with just 50 to 60. And the sheer power of those is unimaginable, as today's nuclear bombs deliver a force 80 times that of the atomic bomb President Harry Truman drops on Hiroshima. A mushroom cloud over North Korea would spell disaster for neighboring countries like China, South Korea, and Japan. So whichever country dropped that nuke, 
would deal with the full force of these nations as well. From radiation poisoning to contaminated rain and waters that would cripple the fishing industry of the Korean Peninsula, nuclear hurts everyone here. Not to mention, millions of North Koreans that have nothing to do with Kim Jong-un's regime would suffer the ultimate. It's why the Cold War didn't see any bomb detonations. Everybody knew it would be doomsday for everyone. Okay, so maybe no nuclear war, but how do you wipe out a rotten regime and bring democracy? It might be time to consider a good old invasion. If multiple nations came together, let's say France, Britain, the United States, South Korea and Japan, North Korea of course wouldn't stand a chance, but the logistics of such an operation mixed with North Korea's location and the element of their nuclear bombs would make it especially difficult. But let's take a look. China and Russia to the north, South Korea and Japan to the south and east, no way any army is marching in through Russian or Chinese borders, as these countries have traditionally been seen as the closest thing North Korea has to allies. And you can't drop soldiers in aerially either, because the guys in North Korea that watch the skies for a living will no doubt detect it. So we're left with either a seaside invasion or one that comes from South Korea. But of course, North Korea knows this. This is why the demilitarized zone separating the north from the south is armed to the teeth with defense systems, including the soon to be cleared hypersonic missile that can potentially hit Seoul in 45 seconds if needed. So any gathering of the military forces it would take to storm North Korea on these sides would be sniffed out instantly. Entry through the Yellow Sea isn't happening either, as China isn't going to allow an army to park in its front yard and ambush the north. The Sea of Japan is a no-go zone as well because you've got Russia carefully watching. And even if they flip on North Korea, chances are Kim Jong-un's military tag would catch you hanging out here with a full navy arsenal. Okay, but what if China and Russia get on board and we all just take the nation at once? Then what? Well, then you'd have to find all the locations housing nuclear and other deadly weaponry, and that's where North Korea's isolation pays off. As there is little intel about where these weapons are hidden, but there are rumors about vast underground networks where Kim Jong-un and his elite bodies will no doubt be moving through. They know where everything is, and therefore they have the true element of surprise for anyone who's bulldozed their way through, giving them the upper hand. Even if the highly skilled allies win out in the end, the casualties could be massive and involve many civilians and military personnel, most of which would be North and South Koreans given the closeness of Seoul. Then there's the reality of a leaderless nation. We know all too well that taking down a dictator has complications. Look at Iraq, Libya, Egypt and the ongoing struggle in Yemen. There could be a worse evil brewing in North Korea, and with such a little knowledge about the state of the country, an invasion becomes riskier. There's got to be a cleaner option. One that doesn't cause wild violence and mass casualty. Sometimes the best way to have a regime throw their hands up is to cut off their resources. It's time for some sanctions. Not the ones that show up in news headlines though. Real sanctions that involve North Korea's greatest lifeline. China. Not only do they share a border, but 80 to 90% of all North Korean trade comes from the People's Republic of China. China's alliance means Kim Jong un can mostly ignore any UN or Western sanctions. But if you were to cut this relationship off, North Korea would be forced to open up to the world and deal with diplomatic negotiations and lesser military pursuits or risk a revolution from North Korea's already frustrated citizens. But China has a pretty good reason for keeping the North and South separate. They even said they'd defend North Korea should the US strike first. But why? Well, this relationship is more about convenience for China than it is true support for Kim Jong-un's regime. Given the strategic location and South Korea's close ties to Washington, North Korea's existence is crucial to China. If Korea became one, then it's safe to assume that US troops would scoot right up to the Chinese border and plant a big, fat military base there. With greater US military presence in Japan and South Korea, China isn't so keen on handing the Korean peninsula to the US. Which is pretty understandable, but China is also not ready to receive the influx of refugees that would result from a change in power or any instability in North Korea. So if the PRC is to join the allied nations against North Korea, they would have to be guaranteed that no US military presence would occur in Northern Korea. There would also have to be an international plan for North Korean refugees that wouldn't put the burden solely on China. 
This option, as impossible as it might seem, given the current geopolitical environment, is pretty legit. Since Kim Jong-un took power, he and China's president, Xi Jinping, haven't been seeing eye to eye. Observers suggest that the two of them aren't getting along too well, mostly because Kim Jong-un is obsessed with nuclear capability, something Xi Jinping is not too happy about. Meaning this would be the perfect time to convince China that supporting the dying empire is in their best interest. But the breakdown could take years, and the Kim regime has been known to put its people at risk to ensure its longevity. So maybe it's time to consider something completely different. Something completely out of the ordinary. Enter the money bomb. This would involve the simple act of airdropping a boatload of counterfeit North Korean won over the entire country. The visuals alone would be epic. All of this fake currency would flood the North Korean market and drive up the cost and value of goods. That in turn would drive down the value of the won and imbalance the demand and supply chain when it comes to the currency. The weakened won would lead to the country conceding and using foreign currency like the Chinese won or the US dollar to function daily, more so than it does currently. This would put North Korea at the mercy of foreign banks and financial structures. But it would also push Kim Jong-un and his elites to shift their funds around, creating alerts for those who monitor international funds of leaders. Kim would have to step up his weapons and drug trade side hustles to drum up money for military expansion, but the masses would be looking for answers. So yeah, I mean, the money bomb idea sounds absolutely great, but a money bomb might not be the cleanest option. And the reason for that is that it might not remove Kim Jong-un from power. See, something similar happened in the southern region of Africa in the country of Zimbabwe, as dictator Robert Mugabe began printing money endlessly to facilitate his country's crushing poverty under foreign sanctions. The result, ridiculous inflation rates and no relief for the people. So if the same happens in North Korea, which is already faltering from poverty, the money bomb might snap the entire country in half. But even with this option, the Korean people need enough determination to get rid of the entire regime and find their own path. And the illusion of the Kim Empire would have to be exposed. In that case, it might be wise to use the same strategy that North Korea has used to keep its power. The control of information. Pulling back the non-existent mystery of the regime and the pile of lies that make Kim Jong-un's dynasty possible is one of the cleanest ways of ousting the dictator because it puts the power directly in the people's hands. As things change globally and information moves fast, North Korea is waking up to the reality of their nation. This has all been possible because of Kim Jong-un's paranoia and the nation's hermit status. With the declining economy and rising poverty, Black markets where goods are smuggled from China have opened people's eyes to life outside of North Korea. It's also eliminating propaganda about how life is in South Korea and the rest of the world. USBs and DVDs of documentaries, reality shows and movies from other countries show the truth. The idea would be to bombard North Korea with the truth. Even stories from defectors are already circulating in the country. So it would be a pretty good idea, but it still wouldn't be enough. People who are caught with this information might suffer a fate of hard labor or even death. So there would need to be a way of getting information out there altogether to stop the targeting of specific citizens. This is where tech companies like Apple and Microsoft could come in handy. Mass awareness could lead to a Korean spring or awakening. This option, much like the breakdown with China and the money bomb, is more realistic than you might think, leaving desperate people in its wake to ask the hard questions about their leadership. If allies want to quicken the revolution, they could apply pressure from the outside by making it clear that close allies like Japan and South Korea will defend them fiercely if they are attacked in any way. It's harder to manufacture a revolution, but if all of these efforts occur in high volumes, then Kim Jong-un and his elites will most likely do what other dictators cornered by the people do, run. Even if he closes his ears and develops more weaponry, he'll feel insecure about detonating. This will give the people more time to rally themselves and find a way to depose Kim and his crew and build a new North Korea. If all of these options are taken in different doses, except going nuclear of course, then it's only a matter of time before the regime crumbles. After all, nothing lasts forever, even the supreme leader knows that.